Hello to those of you who have watched my videos here with the Wildlife Channel. I appreciate it and thank you for the likes, the comments, those of you who have subscribed. Uh, we're doing something for the first time we've never done on this channel, and that's going to be a product review. Every other video you've seen on this channel has been of trail cam footage from around the property, uh, with an occasional video of my dog, uh, maybe some drone footage that I've thrown in there a couple of times, but, but pretty much the channel's been all about the trail cam videos. And uh, we're making an exception, doing a first time review, because we got a, a, a free product delivered to us that I wanted to do a review of. Uh, those of you who have watched my comments uh, in the threads when we've responded back and forth, and those of you who run your own trail cams, know that um, a few of the challenges. One, there's hundreds of different brands of cameras out there, and knowing which brand and which model to pick can be really daunting when you're first getting into this. Um, I've run a certain line of camera for the most part, and increasingly want to find something else. Uh, two, the other big challenge is batteries. Battery. It takes so many batteries, especially if you shoot video rather than photos. Uh, the photos will make uh, the batteries obviously last a lot longer. When you start shooting video uh, in general, and then when you throw in shooting video at night, it really burns through the batteries. And uh, that brings me to the review of this camera we received from Vupik. Uh, they have sent us their solar powered model, the TC22. And I want to tell you a little bit about uh, what I found when I ran this camera uh, for about three or four weeks around the property and uh, some of the things I like and some of the things they could do better. Some of it was user error on my part. Uh, so let's dive in. If you've watched the channel and you've seen my number counts or seen some of the comments I've made in response to your comments on the page, I run a lot of cameras. Uh, at any given time, uh, you know, I run uh, somewhere north of 30 trail cameras. Um, and then I have some other cameras that are watching those cameras from a security perspective. Some are way high up in trees, footage you guys will never see, and then others are on uh, the wildlife. And th those are what we put here. And uh, so let me talk a little bit about what I liked about this camera. First of all, the solar powered. Uh, I don't know about you guys, anytime I hear solar powered, uh, I'm a little skeptical. Um, I've had good experiences and bad experiences with different products, mainly lights that are solar powered. Uh, they're kind of dim, you know, they, they don't work great. I can say after about four weeks of testing with this camera, uh, they've sold me on the solar powered part of this, which is huge because of the challenges it creates uh, when you have to keep putting batteries. Uh, this camera doesn't even have the ability to, for you to install backup batteries like some other solar powered ones. So you're, you're relying solely 100% on the solar. And uh, the first time I ran this, and I'm, I'm showing some of the footage during uh, the, the playback that you're watching, I had uh, mounted one of the cameras right over here. Now, in that case, it was out in the bright sunlight. Uh, the camera performed flawlessly. But a lot of my footage is in the woods where there's not as much um, sun all day. So then I moved the camera to one of those locations on a trail that get, gets sun part of the day. And I positioned, you know, obviously the solar powered contraption at the top um, toward that direction. Uh, but it's certainly not an all day sun exposure. It's uh, a few hours each day. When I came to check on the camera uh, a few, uh, you know, near the end of that first week, and there was definitely video footage that had been shot, the camera battery was still showing at 100%. In fact, every time I've checked the battery level, it has shown 100%. Uh, to me, that's just significant because it makes it a camera uh, that you could put out in the field and not have to, you know, worry about going out to change the batteries. I uh, keep a spreadsheet of all my cameras of the dates I've changed uh, the batteries out. And there's a big difference between alkaline and lithium. The lithium batteries are so expensive and I definitely get more use out of those than the alkaline batteries, but you're still changing them out frequently if you're using video. Uh, I did not do any test footage with photos with this camera because it's just not what I do. Uh, I wanted to compare it to what I do each, each week uh, with the cameras that I use in rotation for this, and it's all video. And so I set this out in the woods, all on video, day and night, and uh, it worked like a charm, 100% uh, battery life. Uh, real pleased with that part of it. Number two that I'll talk about is video quality. Obviously, if you're putting a camera out uh, in the field, in the woods, you want to get good uh, footage. 
Uh, this camera has, during the day, 4K, 30 frames per second. Uh, at night, you have a range of options. I think I went with the 1080 option at night. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'm rolling some footage so you can see what I saw. Uh, I was very pleased with this footage. You know, it's one of the most challenging things is finding uh, good quality footage, especially at night. And, uh, you know, there's all sorts of price points and ranges on these cameras. I feel like this one's a very reasonable kind of balance uh, of quality and price and everything else. And, um, you know, as you can see here, this footage blends in well with all the other footage that has been on the channel. Uh, so really pleased uh, with the quality of the footage, both day and night, uh, which is not always the case. Also under the quality uh, umbrella would be the uh, distance at night that it can record. Uh, th these cameras at night use an infrared um, light uh, to capture and provide the light that, you're, uh, that is in use for you to see the wildlife at night. Uh, the range on this one is 65 feet. Uh, you'll see all sorts of ranges in the market. Some are longer. They're marketed as longer, some are shorter. Um, this one is kind of a sweet spot to me. Anything over about 65 to 75 feet starts to be pretty good. Uh, where I have my cameras placed, and it, it captured lots of footage at night. A lot of the footage on my cameras comes at night. So I'm pleased with that. I think that overall is a good, a good sweet spot for the night range. Number three thing I'll mention uh, is the microphone and the sound capability. When I first got into this hobby, uh, I used another brand and their uh, cameras recorded only video, no audio. And I quickly realized I didn't like that. Uh, the animals aren't making, uh, you know, they're not out there talking, but you like to hear any of the sounds of nature that you can, the footsteps. Uh, this camera worked like a charm on that. Uh, no problems on that front. Uh, one of the things I'll note is I've got some other cameras, uh, you know, out in the field, um, I'll say out in the woods. And a couple of the other brands that I had purchased, uh, often when I'm going to check these cameras, I'm either riding an ATV or I'm walking. And uh, some of the cameras do not handle that ATV well. Uh, the noise is deafening. It's maxing out the, the noise level that the camera can handle. And um, similarly with uh, like gunshots sometimes, if, it, if they're too close to where uh, gunshots might be going off, the mics can't handle it. That wasn't the case with this camera. Um, I rode my ATV purposely around this to see how I would handle it. It sounded like an ATV riding around. Uh, some of these other cameras uh, I've used, you want to turn the volume down, stick your fingers in your ear because it just can't handle the noise. It's maxing it out. Uh, no problems with that front on this one. Next up on my list. This may seem like a minor thing, but um, one of the things that I was glad to find with this camera is that the files that it produces work with Apple's preview function uh, in the Apple Finder. Uh, my workflow is I work on usually all, uh, all Apple devices in the house, an iPhone, uh, a Mac, uh, an iMac, a Mac Mini, and uh, I like to edit the footage on a Mac. I've got one camera in my rotation that you cannot preview the files from the SD card using the Apple preview when you're in the Finder. I've been in touch with that company and also tried to research this. And basically what I'm told is that they use their own codecs, uh, not to get too technical, but basically the way they've programmed, and, and I'm no expert in this either, but basically some of the technical stuff in their files means it doesn't play nicely with Apple. So my only way to see the files is to open every one of them one by one, and uh, it just slows me down. And my workflow is I like to preview them quickly on the SD card and copy them over to a certain folder quickly where I'll work with it all later when I get around to doing that part of it. Uh, the files produced by this camera work with Apple's Finder. You would think they all do, but it's not Apple's fault. It's the maker of the camera. Uh, so, you know, if that's important to you, just know that they do work and play nicely with Apple and the preview. Next thing I'll mention that I like. Uh, the camera is waterproof and windproof. Um, when you've got these trail cameras out, you would think that they are all waterproof and windproof. Some are marketed that way, and then you have a really bad rain, and it turns out they're not. Uh, I've had this out uh, for about four weeks. We've definitely had some strong rains, and it's still chugging along just fine. And uh, so anyhow, uh, if, the, if you're worried about that, uh, at least in my uh, four-week experiment so far, i got no concerns about that. So that's good.
So every camera has some trade-offs and pros and cons of features and what have you. I'm gonna talk about two things that I wish were a little different on this camera. All right, first off, because of the design of the camera um, with an opening door, when you, uh, when you have the camera and you have to open it, that means when you're working out and you have it mounted on a tree or a pole, wherever you have it, you can't see what the camera is seeing once it's closed to make sure it's pointed at what you would like. Some of the other cameras that I regularly use on the channel, um, you open a bottom compartment door, but the camera is up above. And with this camera, when you open it, the entire thing opens up. So that means I can't really preview what the camera is seeing. Now their solution to this, they have two solutions to it. Uh, when you close it, they have a little sensor when you have it in setup mode that you can walk in front of it and see if it's triggering. Um, you know, uh, that's one way to do it. It's not my preferred way. I'd rather just see what the camera is seeing rather than doing some, uh, you know, human tricks to, to trigger it and see if it works. The second way they have, which is more effective, is you can link it up with your uh, iPhone using uh, an app that they uh, recommend. And I tested that. You download it and you connect it by Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to the camera and it lets you preview what the camera is seeing. It actually lets you control all of the settings. You can hit record and stop, take pictures and stop. So I was able to preview it that way, but if I had a bunch of these out in the woods, it'd be kind of a clunky way. Maybe the first time you set it up, that's all you need to do if you're leaving the camera in the same spot. Um, I, I liked the Wi-Fi app. It worked fine, it was quick. I uh, really didn't have any issues with it. I don't know if I would use it all the time. Um, I might just take my chances I've lined it up correctly, but that's one thing. You just gotta be aware of the design of the camera's a little different. The second thing I'll mention, this camera has three settings on their power button, off, setup, and on. I'm not a fan of this design uh, on this camera or others because my other cameras have uh, an off and an on setting. And when you have it on, you, you go through the menu, and if when you're done, you just back out of the menu. Or if you forget, the camera just goes into recording mode after a certain time, like 30 seconds. This camera does not do that, and because of that, I lost a couple of weeks worth of footage because I forgot to move it from setup to on. So if you just leave it in setup, nothing's happening. So I came back you know, a couple weeks later to check on some of the footage. Zero footage because it was left in setup mode. That's user error. And for those of you that work regularly with cameras that have an off, setup, and on, you know, <laughs> you're probably used to it. I am not. My workflow was not that. And in fact, some of the other cameras I have here, they have an off and an on. That's it. Then I have another one that's off, on, set up all the way to the right. And then I have this camera, which is off to the left, set up in the middle, on to the right. And so when you're working with these different cameras, you've really got to slow down and make sure um, you've got it on because it doesn't default to go back after, say, 30 seconds. Uh, you end up doing what I did. It was a stupid thing. It was my fault. Uh, but you miss out on all this footage. So my preference on these cameras is have off and on with a menu button, and then it backs out. Uh, so just know going in with the design of camera, that's what you're getting with this one. So all considered, I'm a big fan of this camera. Uh, I really like the solar powered part of it. I'm gonna continue to try to put it in different trails and areas of my woods where there's limited uh, sunlight coming through to see how it does. Uh, but the trail that I picked that I had this one on, it's, it's, it's pretty par for the course for what I have. It, it gets sunlight for maybe a half to a quarter of the day, and uh, it, it's shown 100%. So I'm pleased with that. Uh, it comes with a couple of straps, uh, the owner's manual. Um, you've got to supply a memory card, which is pretty normal. And um, for those of you that have made it this far and you have some interest in checking out this camera, uh, you know, inflation being what it is, everybody's watching what they spend. Uh, they've been nice enough to send a link where if you're interested in this camera, you can get 10% off by using the link I'll put in the description. Uh, so check out the camera, uh, see if you like it, buy it, put it out in your woods or your uh, field, see what you think of it. All right. 
thanks again to Vupik for sending us this camera. We're going to keep running some footage, and uh, you'll see this showing up in the videos as we keep moving on. All right, thanks for watching the channel.